What is going on, guys? It's Chris, and I am back with a guest. We're talking red tail catfish. We are going to deep dive into this beautiful, magnificent fish. Um, the red tail catfish is my recent favorite fish in the house, and that's kind of like what brought on the stream. And I have a guest who I consider maybe like a, uh, I don't know if I call him an expert, but he is the guy that single-handedly got me into red tail catfish. So um, without further ado, I guess I'll have him on. His name is Dusty, and uh, his YouTube channel is Aquatic Guru. So say what's up, Dusty. What's up, everybody? All right, so we have some people in the house. Um, they are flocking in. Um, so I want to deep dive into this. I'm really excited about this. Um, and please let us know in the comment section, like your experience with red tail catfish. Um, have you dreamt of owning this fish? This is kind of like one of those uh, fish that, you know, a lot of people don't get to own. I don't know. What do you think, Dusty? Yeah, there's not many people that should own them either <laughs> but you know not many people can in the first place it takes a lot of space to you know i mean raise them up properly uh yeah you know not exactly. many people have that capabilities lots of apartment livers in the aquatic community so mm -hmm. it's hard to say i can have a you know thousand mm -hmm. gallon pond or something like that if i live in an apartment like i got now <laughs> yeah exactly uh, what, essentially what got me into red tail catfish, you know, um, I mean, I've kept a little bit of monster fish in the past, but Dusty had a pond, uh, that I visited and, uh, you can check it out on his channel. Um, he had a pool pond that I later somehow got to own, but, uh, here, here, this is the setup that got me entirely addicted to the hobby. Um, I, I don't know. Tell us about it, Dusty. So that, that thing was really awesome. So uh, basically what happened is I bought Thor, the big, big, huge red tail you see in that little video. Uh, when I bought him, he was like three inches long. And I bought a 40 breeder. I bought a 75. And I bought two, two ponds. That way I could like, you know, gradually watch him grow up. I wanted to see how fast he grew and stuff like that. Literally outgrew every single thing I put him in faster than I could buy, the, faster than I could set up the next one. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but what, you know, go ahead. Uh, like what? What made you decide to just uh, all of a sudden one day just pick up a pool pond and go at this? It's just kind of a weird thing, you know. Yeah, it's not something you see every day. Obviously, you don't see your average fish keeper just saying, "I'm going to grab a pool pond and uh, a bunch of catfish," you know, and stuff like that, and. I don't know. I ended up seeing, uh, you know, I saw a lot of posts on our local groups about, hey, I'm giving away this red tail, that red tail, this peacock bass, like all these awesome monster fish. And I was like, Dude, that would be something cool. And I got a ton of space at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe I should just do this, you know, and buy a pool pond and get this thing going and just see what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, we, we can get to more of that personal stuff at the end possibly, but I kind of want to do a deep dive and just kind of like getting geeky about this fish, you know, because this is kind of like, I feel like what, what I love to do is just kind of geek out about it. So, and I want to use, use the time that I have you effectively. So, uh, what I want to do is kind of just go through some of the basics that people, you know, talk about and wonder about when it come to own when it comes to owning these fish so i guess uh we'll start at the beginning what exactly is a red tail catfish so a red tail catfish is a red tail uh from uh the amazon in south america mm -hmm. um in the wild they reach massive lengths you know you're talking four to sometimes even five six feet long just huge huge fish um not something that you should see every day, but over time they developed their way into like Florida and stuff like that. And fish keepers started keeping them and stuff like that and trying to, you know, see if they could, I guess, uh, what's the word domesticate them, I guess you could say, yeah, you know, yeah. keep them in. Maybe they wouldn't grow as fast as they grow in the wild or something, or maybe that takes 20 years to make them that big or, you know, mm -hmm. people got interested in what is this thing? And I want it, you know, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's got, bright red or pink type fins it's got you know it looks like a killer whale almost with a spotted head and <laughs> i know right they're just like the coolest looking and obviously acting fish i mean i totally missed that whole setup man that thing was 
just hand feeding them was the greatest thing I've ever done. I mean, you can do that with small fish too, but there's nothing mm-hmm. like feeding a catfish that can take your own hand in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, uh, I, I was just attempting to hand feed mine a little bit ago and it, uh, I'll admit, like I get scared cause it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just like you catch yourself like pulling back your hand and you're like, Oh no. So th- the red tail catfish, it's obviously from the Amazon river. Um, I think, um, I, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just go down the list. I don't want to get too far into this. So the next one is where does a person buy a red tail and like, how is the pricing? Would you say? So some local fish stores will carry them. Some of them are totally against, totally against it, you know, mm-hmm. um, for the most part, they're like 20, 30 bucks. So they're the average price of a, you know, decent African cichlid even, you know, so people mm-hmm. look at it and think, Hey, I can take that. It's affordable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not that much truthfully, you know, a lot of people, um, once they get big though, that's when people start saying, Hey man, I just want to give this thing away. Like nobody wants to buy it cause it's two feet long. You know what I mean? Yeah. got to figure out a situation to even put it in, in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, you know, I mean, there's online places, you got predatory fins and stuff like that, that people order them from. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where you get like your crazy ones, like your platinums and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff you won't really see in too many local fish stores, Mm-hmm. Um, more so the big popular ones that specialize in it. Okay. Awesome. So would you say if a person was looking for one, just to hit up their, their local fish store, maybe if they don't have them, maybe they can order them or. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, some mm-hmm. will, some will refuse to even do that too. So you get, you know, it's, you got to ask to see, of course, but mm-hmm. you know, realistically there's a few of them that will push the limit and grab them when they're babies um makes it easy for them to sell because they're small and you know what i mean yeah exactly okay um this is kind of a weird one um number three why do you think people like red tails oh my god i put retails (laughs) Uh, because of videos like mine (laughs) where you can pet them and feed them and yeah honestly like like, i didn't like little water puppies man (laughs) yeah i didn't i never thought i'd own one again i you know, I owned one in the past and got rid of it. But like, once I saw your pond and I saw how big these things got, it was just, I don't know, man. It was just, it kind of touched me, you know? Right. Right. It's very interesting. It's definitely something that I look forward to doing again in the future Mm -hmm. for sure. I just, something about that whole aspect there. And like, you can't necessarily buy things for that that type system you know what i mean like you're building filtration you're building a tank you're not you know it it really truly brings out the diy in you too yeah exactly uh i will say though that those pool ponds i'm like i've been i'm just scared of them now after i had that one leak on me but i was i was super leery but i mean i had that thing up for a year and a half and yeah you know it's probably moving it around is probably the most uh detrimental to it you know what Mm -hmm. i mean yeah and i yeah we'll get into that later but um how about the next one uh a lot of people talk about how fast red tail catfish grow like what um do you do you recall how fast any yours grew that you were keeping or it it really varied it was like Mm -hmm. one to three inches a month i want to say okay it's pretty you know it all depends truthfully i mean even in giant even in like when i put them when i first put them in that pool pond they were pretty small i mean they were probably a foot long maybe 10 inches Mm -hmm. something like that and everybody was like oh you know he's in a big pond he's gonna grow fast now and i mean honestly if they don't eat a whole lot obviously they're not gonna grow same thing happens in everything else but yeah i fed mine regularly I, uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty much daily, yeah, which is what you're supposed to do until they reach about two feet. At that point, they just kind of don't care. They'll eat like once a week. Yeah. They'll just look at it like whatever, dude. <laughs> so, D- Dusty, you got to tell us about this crazy video you did where yeah, uh, you you weighed each of your fish. Tell, <laughs> t- walk us through this here because this is this is pretty crazy. That was actually a really fun video. It's terrifying, honestly, but. Basically, in the in the container down on the right on that video, there is, is tank water. I scooped it out of the tank. And then what yep. I did is the bucket that I got there now, you can see the water running out of it. I drilled a bunch of holes in it mm-hmm. so then I could transfer the fish out and then still have them back in water but not have to worry about, you know, 
spilling all over the place or the bucket breaking as I'm trying to carry it or anything like that. Obviously, yeah. Thor's in there going bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, um, were, were you worried about the fish kind of freaking out? or like, or, where, where did you get this crazy idea? It's brilliant. I was very worried about him getting injured. Um, but I've seen it on, surprisingly, a fishing show. Uh, oh, really? they didn't have they didn't want to uh hook in the gills on the fish and stuff like that to hurt them they just wanted to find a way to you know how can i wear this thing with minimal damage you know maybe possible a little couple fin nicks or something like that but nothing that will cause you know major pain like shoving a hook through his side of his cheek you know what i mean yeah yeah so i and i figured that would be a great idea because they were my pets you know i didn't want to hang them by a you know I much rather would have tried to weigh them and, and measure them the way I did. That way I can get them, you know, in a close area and still be able to, you know, like that, hold the tape measure. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you know, they kind of calmed down in there a lot and I was able to weigh them much easier after they sat in there and I measured them and stuff too. Mm -hmm. What do you remember the results? Like uh, on average, what, what these guys were weighing at like what length they were at or anything like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, it is in that video though. Mm -hmm. I say it and I do put it up in words on the screen. Their exact uh, measurements on length and weight um, okay. all in that video. So if you want to look at that, you can check that out. If I can't, rem I can't remember exactly. I want to say Thor um, at around, gosh, I can't remember what that was like 21 inches or something like that, or 22 mm -hmm. inches or something mm -hmm. uh he weighed uh gosh i think it was like three pounds or something like that so that's he was pretty chunky um hey hey but, quick question that the algae in the pond there, there five oh, pounds oh nice 4.8 pounds tell me about that algae like i have add here but so that's obviously from the light yep. was that something you dealt with pretty commonly oh yeah definitely i okay. mean i i kind of personally just left it in there at the mm -hmm. same time yeah, because I tried to put plants in there and nothing worked. And mm -hmm. the next best thing that pulled nutrients was algae. And I was like, okay, so monster tanks, they have algae that's going to pull some of the nutrients out of the water and turn it into oxygen, just like a plant would do. Exactly. Yeah. It's just not going to look as gorgeous as a planted tank, mm -hmm. but it's to some people it will. It's funny because every fish keeper sees that and they're just like, clean it, clean it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, too, I didn't want to get in there and scrub that thing too much. I was too worried about it puncturing somehow. <laughs> yeah, I I honestly like I have a pond liner in my pond now and I'm just I'm just so skeptical of it. It's it's a scary thing with ponds, you know, right? Any of them, man, honestly, oh, like even God. like plywood tanks just concern me. I'm like, I know it's like mm -hmm. I know it's supposed to hold it. And I know it does because I've seen many of them hold it. But yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's so much water on my floor. <laughs> I know. That pool pond leak. Well, uh, to kind of get back to it, uh, I somehow came about to owning this pool pond after Dusty got rid of it. And uh, I set it up and it leaked on me. And uh, I had to shop back, you know, two, 300 gallons of water off my basement. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. What do you do, though, huh? It's right. the price you pay. Yeah, it's, it's what we sign up for. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so let's get into some uh, some of the nitty gritty here. Number four on my list is, um, or five, sorry, tank size and requirements. Uh, this is kind of a, a lot of controversy around even keeping these fish in aquariums. I don't know, Dusty, what do you think? Uh, in an aquarium, anything under 12 inches, you should be all right. Mm -hmm. up to you know i'm talking about the fish not mm -hmm. the tank um, so so six months of growth <laughs> yeah yeah at yeah. most at yeah, most you got that's... six months in that tank and that's literally if you just want to watch them grow out a little bit <laughs> <laughs> past that point they just explode through that glass like you wouldn't believe yeah. I didn't see, i've never had yeah. it to me happen to me personally mm -hmm. but i can tell you by the way that they smash into stuff they would have punched right through that thing just like a rock if you accidentally tap the glass. It, you think it would, so? That thing would have yeah. punched right through it. Especially the new style tanks. They're a lot thinner, you know? Yeah, yeah. The old, yeah. like, it, I had an old 75. That's what I had them in for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, had the super thick glass on it and stuff, so I wasn't too concerned. Yeah. Um. God, I just had a good thought, and I can't. It, it, I was just lost at it. <laughs> um. So... 
you were saying that you entirely miss keeping these monster fish and uh would you deep dive right back into it if you could or no if i could you you bet you, you bet. bet if um gotcha. if, if if things would have planned actually to be honest if things would have planned out the way i wanted to mm -hmm. this year with yeah all this crap going on and stuff i mean i, I would have been in a house rather than an apartment and if that was the case, there would have been a big 2,500 plus gallon thing going up, whether it be concrete or plywood or, you know, I was going to mm -hmm. go all out and I wanted something big enough to keep a red tail again since I couldn't get mine back after losing them and stuff and then whatnot. And I was just going to start fresh, you know, get babies mm -hmm. and start fresh and just raise them up like that. And you know what I mean? But didn't work out the way I wanted. So I got stuck with switching to small stuff. <laughs> Yeah, what's funny is you see, you know, if you're in the Facebook groups, uh, you see these fish in, t in in aquariums more than you do like ponds. I swear to God to you. Like, I, I'm convinced that these red tails don't live past a year for a lot of people keeping them. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. What do you think of that? I agree because I've been in many of the monster groups, especially when I had the pond. I was really, really... Um what's the word vocal in, in, mm -hmm. in other Facebook groups and stuff like that. And then of course my own and whatever. And there's a lot of it was wrapped around monster fish keeping. And, you know, there's so, so many like stressful moments <laughs> of reading about people like, Hey, I got this red tail in my 55 and he's 18 inches. How long can I keep him in there? It's like till tomorrow. <laughs> like, go get something like what are you waiting yesterday for? yeah yeah you know i mean they, mm -hmm. it's crazy um but you know it you see it so often and especially in the facebook groups of when because people just buy them you know like i said they some some fish stores will just they won't even tell you just be like oh yeah here it's an awesome 30 dollar fish how big does mm -hmm. it get oh i don't know you know and they or they won't tell you or they'll say you know, some of the honest ones will be like, I am not selling you this unless you have this. Mm -hmm. If you have that, then okay, I'll give it to you. But Yeah, I feel like to uh, a lot of monster fish keepers, this might be uh, kind of a generalization, but they, they just kind of keep the fish to just throw like live feeders in there. And it's kind of like this badass fish. And then uh, I, I see so many of just the fish being not taken care of well, for being honest, but right right that's a whole other gambit there yeah i see that a lot i mean it's it, it's all over the hobby realistically though man because i mean yeah. there's lots of like overstocking things and like under filtrating things and you know just i mean a lot of people got it's it's i mean it, 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 the best thing is don't get frustrated about it man i mean <laughs> we all learn something but you yeah. know hopefully it, that knowledge saves instead of gets deleted but mm -hmm. You know how about I mean? how about this one, Dusty? Moving on. Uh, what are the best options? Uh, obviously, people want to keep these fish. Uh, is is this pool pond the best route, or I don't know? In your personal opinion, what do you think is the best route? In my personal opinion, if you got a basement with like a drain or like a garage that doesn't get too cold or anything like that, if you can keep it, you know, like if you if you don't live in the north, like we meet, like me and Chris, where. Our garages are negative thirty degrees some days. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, if you get, if you got that that type situation, pool ponds are awesome. Um, obviously, if you got it in your basement, it's best to have a drain on your floor. Hopefully, it'll you know drain out. But you know, prepare for stuff like that. But that applies to all of them, honestly. Pool ponds at the same time nowadays are more expensive than when I got mine. Mm -hmm. um, they've almost gone five six times up in value versus when i bought that one um i was gonna i was gonna look into getting another one and i was like wow the price is like when i bought mine it was like 50 bucks or something and you know the the next time i looked to buy one and they were like 200 and i was like whoa for the same thing like yeah what's different about it <laughs> i heard this summer too that like there was a shortage on pools or something and yeah uh, people couldn't people couldn't find them or something yep yep um, All right. but yeah, otherwise I would say, you know, if the price is right, plywood's probably the best route, but definitely make sure you do it right. Or you're going to end up in the same situation with water all over the floor. Mm -hmm. All right. So next I'd like to deep dive into, uh, water temperature. You know, a lot of people talk about what water temp to keep red tails at. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm keeping mine at in my pond, I think at like 75. I don't know. What do you yep. think of that? Yeah, that's about what mine was at. Um, mine kind of fluctuated with the basement a little bit above mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So there was times, obviously, when the basement got hot and then it was like 80 degrees down there. And, you know, the, the catfish, the, the thing I noticed is when they did that, they would eat a lot more mm-hmm. when it was warmer. Um, when it was like 78 to 80 degrees, they would just chow down on tons of food. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, for the most part, mine was right about where yours is. 75 seems to be the standard. If it's open anyway, most people's houses stick around, you know, that that general temperature. Yeah. I, it's just so expensive heat, but you know, it's, I mean, that's the net that's on my list as well, but we'll get into that. Um, I was going to say with the heating options, the best way is to heat the room. Like I had a fireplace in my room, so it was nice mm-hmm. to, you know, it was easy to just throw some logs in there and heat it up. Um, yeah. obviously if you got to pay for, you know, other situations, that's a little different, but yeah, the hard the part is, is the- controlling it, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And heating, the heating the room is the best in my opinion, but as mm-hmm. far as water fluctuating temperature and tanks, that's a whole nother topic we're gonna have to get on because <laughs> yeah. I think they should fluctuate. Do you? Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean maybe my water changes, maybe that happens, but yeah. Uh I I'm using I don't know if you've seen it, like those uh those plastic eight hundred watt Hyger heaters that have yep, those thermostats. Yep. Um I don't know what's working. It, uh, if you're using electricity to heat that bad boy, I feel like there's like no way around uh, it, be, it right. being expensive. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, that's why when I um, built my barrel, I built my barrel so that way I could throw the heaters in that. Yeah. Um, and then covered the tank whenever I could, you know, to kind of trap whatever I could in there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it evaporated faster if the basement got cold for like a week or something like that, or hot for a week, it would evaporate faster than normal. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to pull the footage of my pond. It's making me angry. <laughs> um. Ah, there we go. It's gonna work. I think. Give it a second to load. Your your catfish, so your red tail you got looks like he's gonna have some real nice red fins too. You think so? Oh yeah, they don't oh. look too pink. Yeah. So a lot of them I see come up pink. I kind of get in my head about like feeding them adequately because you see a lot of posts are just like oh, um, because I don't like overfeeding my fish, but I don't want right. to underfeed them as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, I guess that's the next topic. So, um, what, how did you feed your red tails? Um, so I had a plethora of food realistically. I had, mm-hmm. um, I got fresh rotted prawns, tilapia. Um, we got some, uh, I think it was Pollock or something like that, that we had gotten a bunch of it for free from a family member. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, well, I'll just toss that in there, you know, and they chowed that stuff down too. I had uh, shrimp, obviously, the little frozen shrimp. Um, Gosh, list goes on and on. There's big, huge pellets, like carnivore pellets. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got mine from Ken's Fish because they were like, you get so much more than if you went and bought like a massive board, you know, bag or whatever from the from the fish store. Mm -hmm. Um, I got like three, four times as much for the same price, so I went through them instead. Um, And I got they had catfish pellets that were like huge, like um i don't know probably dime size but pretty thick pellets Mm -hmm. that i would feed them um and then the carna sticks obviously they would suck that off the surface um and then of course there was live stuff too uh we have we have a lot of people around here that breed african cichlids and some other fish like convicts like mad and just you know they they overrun the the fish stores the fish stores don't know what to do with the stuff so i just snagged them and you know, threw them in a tank. Hopefully they bred. If they didn't, you know, I kind of quarantined them for a couple of weeks at least, you know, before I would throw them in the tank and in the pond or whatever and just let them hunt, you know, just like they would in the wild. Did they, could they catch live fish like that? Oh, yeah. Really? Yep. Uh, Thor, the biggest red tail I got actually, the, the day I set up the big cool pond, uh, he was about, like I said, about uh, 10 to 12 inches or something like that. He swallowed down a nine, 10 inch freaking cloud knife in one big gulp and rolled him up like a fruit roll up and choked him down <laughs> the day I was going to move that thing. So yeah, they can eat anything that'll fit in their mouth. And when I say anything, I mean, if your suction cups fall off your heater, they're swallowing them. If your, your filtration comes apart and blows an elbow off, they're swallowing it. 
If, really? if, if it's a rock, they're going to swallow it. If it's gravel, they're going to swallow it. They're going to swallow every single thing that they possibly can in that tank. Yeah, I think I sent you like a couple weeks ago. Um, maybe I sent it to you or someone else, but uh, someone's LG, LG cleaner, the back side of it fell off, one of those big square ones. Yep. yep. And uh, the red tail swallowed it and they had a picture of it in its stomach. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty crazy. They will literally just do they, do they eat it out of boredom or what do you think it is? I think they honestly, the way that they eat, they eat till they're full. Really? That's one thing I noticed. If I had like a big, huge plate of food, you know, like if I cut up a bunch of tilapia and prawns thinking, okay, I haven't fed them in three days. They're going to be starving. You know, I, yeah. that's just the way they were sometimes, but it, it didn't, it was basically like I'd, I'd go to feed them. And whenever they were done, they would just go on the other side of the pond and they wouldn't come back. Hmm. I could throw food to them and they'd be like, yeah, whatever. Or they'd just like nonchalantly swim up to it <laughs> no, and just chow down. But you could tell that they ate when they were hungry. So if they didn't eat, they weren't hungry. And if they were hungry enough, which means if you don't feed them enough, they're going to go after things like you said, like that plastic piece or like your suction cups or your heaters mm -hmm. or whatever. They're going to they're going to try and find something that's edible. Yeah, it's uh, that's pretty crazy, man. And that's well, that's part of the reason they get so big so fast too, because people feed them until they're full every day. Next thing you know, they got a four foot red tail. Yeah. What exactly would you say are the best tank mates for these guys? I know this is a kind of a honestly know. the best way to put that is bigger than their mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I, mean, I know that's hard to say. Um, the best piece of advice, don't spend a bunch of money on fish to put with them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like don't go, like if you're wanting peacock bass, you know, find the cheapest damn peacock bass you can find, throw that thing in there. Cause if it gets eaten, then it's not the end of the world. You know, whoop you do your red tail got a full meal. You don't got to feed them for a week. <laughs> cool. It was a $10 meal. Neat. You know? Yeah. But Yeah don't take crazy risks and go buy any crazy expensive stuff. Cause there's always that scare of what ifs, you know, and mm -hmm. it happens more frequently than not. If they're hungry, they're going to, if that, if the opportunity arises, they're going to take it. Yeah. One thing that I don't have on the list here is that I've realized with mine is I feel like they, they prefer to hide. Uh, yeah. You know, I've put some caves in there. And I know some people might say like, oh, well, you should train them not to hide. But I don't know. What's your opinion on that? So mine, um, when they were in tanks and I would say under 15 inches, mm -hmm. they were pretty skittish and like to hide a lot. Yeah. Um, after that, though, they got used to the hand feedings and stuff like that. They simply got too big for caves. There was nothing I could find that could have fit, a, a, you know, two foot catfish, two of them, three of them. I had three of them in there. And they would all bundle up together, so there was no way of really making a cave. And they didn't necessarily want one either. They just kind of, you know, swam around. They would go hide behind the logs that I had in there and stuff like that. But they didn't necessarily go under anything or hide after they got pretty much over about 14 inches. Mm -hmm. they, they became a lot more outgoing after that. Yeah, Especially I mean... since I raised a lot of them when they were younger. Um, you know, they, they got used to being more social, I guess you could say. Yeah. I mean, that video of you getting in the pond is still blowing my mind. I want to bring that up again. Cause it's just, uh, it's really cool. Um, the next topic though, what I feel like the biggest fail with people that are keeping red tails is the long-term plan. What, right. do you do you agree with that or like yes okay 100%. So, so what what do you think is what do you think people are screwing up like with I that think, plan i think people um they'll do something like uh you know i don't know get like a 400 gallon tank or something like that or um like a smaller pool pond or something like that you know and get more fish than they should realistically you know and a lot of people think hey well i'm gonna upgrade that and you know you don't really think about the 
future, I guess you could say. Like when I did mine, I bought everything before I bought the Red Tail. I bought my 40 breeder, I bought my 75, I bought everything before I bought the fish. Mm -hmm. That way I had everything just kind of sitting in storage. You know, I didn't have to necessarily worry about them getting too big too fast. I could just throw the pond up and put them in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people underestimate how quickly they really do grow and how much they do eat and all that stuff. And it gets hard for some people to pay for feeding them just because the food gets even expensive over time. You know what I mean? And yeah, the heating bills and the water bills and all that stuff adds up. And a lot of people don't think about that before they dive into, you know, I'm going to throw a thousand gallons in my basement. Mm hmm. You know, there's a lot more to it than just throwing a thousand gallons in your basement. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, I got to say, like that, that's kind of like my big first pond I did. And it's like it's definitely pretty intense, you know? Yeah. Um, Weird side question. Uh, would, would have you ever heard of any weird things you shouldn't be feeding red tails like, uh, you know, people are always sending me weird like worms and stuff. I mean, but like. I've heard some rumors that like they like to eat uh, cat food and stuff, or I don't know. What do you think of that? Honestly, red tails will eat dang near anything. Like I anything. said, anything. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, people do feed cat food because it's cheap. Yeah, it's not it's like high it's, in protein, right? Too or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's high in protein and stuff like that because obviously cats, they you know their felines, they eat a mm -hmm. lot of, of uh, protein versus anything else realistically. Mm -hmm. So you know that the catfish, catfish are very similar. To be honest, they, they thrive on a high protein diets, um, but they'll eat anything. Like I said, they'll eat plants and whatever. They really don't care. But high protein is definitely the best food for them. So when it boils down to, you know, what you just said, um, <laughs> mind blank. I know, right? Look at you feeding those things. Uh, how uh, on a scale of one to ten, like how nervous were you are to get in that pond? Honestly, I was more nervous yeah. about the bass because when they bit my finger a couple times, I was, oh, really? I was like, oh, my God, dude, they have like little fangs, dude. They're so mean. Yeah. The the catfish, on the other hand, they got my fingers a couple times and it, 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 you hardly feel it realistically, it's, I don't think. It's weird how personable those peacocks are. Yeah, like, those guys. I could I could literally put my hand in the water and grab them by the mouth, too, at times. They did not care. Really? They were super, super friendly. It was weird. Yeah. I got, I, I got them from a guy that had them in a 90 gallon and I thought they were just going to be terror, you know, terrorized for the rest of their lives. And do they put on like four inches and like the snap of a finger? And then all of a sudden they were just like the most social fish I had other than obviously the red tails. Okay. Um, another weird side question. What was your favorite, uh, monster fish you'd ever had in that pond? The red tails for sure. The red tails for sure. How many? Even, how many? Did you, sorry, what, to interrupt. How many in total did you have? Uh, it, I had two red tails, and then I had uh, the red tail tiger shovel and those uh, hybrid. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Yep. Um, th what what makes it so much cooler than the others? The cafe, uh, their personality. Their personality. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. like I don't know, sitting out. I sat out there a lot to be honest with you and mm -hmm. just like hung out with them and, you know, just had my hand like hanging over the side of the pool and just kind of dangling around and they would come over and they'd just kind of rub up against me. And I was like, Oh, that's weird. Why are they doing that? You know? And then it developed into like, I could stick my <laughs> hand in the water and Ragnar, my smaller red tail, yeah. where I could, I could like cut my hand like this, you know, and mm -hmm. he would swim close enough to just rub his whole back again. He'd fold back his top fin and everything. And he'd, he'd rub against the inside of my hand and he'd spin around and come back and do it the other way. And it, I got tons of videos of that. It was super cool, man. It was one of those things that I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is a fish. Like I don't have any mm -hmm. other fish that do this, you know, like people say, Oh, you can do it with a better. And I've had like four betters, man. I can't get them to do that. Like the red tails that <laughs> they became my favorite fish of all time. It's like having a water puppy. Yeah. And I got to say too, like when I, when I show, cause I'll have like neighbors come over, you know, that look at all the fish and stuff in the pond. And I will say that like everyone comments the most on the red tail catfish like that when they're leaving the house, like that's, that is maybe the coolest thing. 
And I, I often wonder, like, what is it about it? But I, I don't know. I think it's the crazy colorations on them. And well, yeah, that too. The the pattern, like they, like I said earlier, they look like a killer whale kind of. Yeah, they're with thick red fins, too, you know? boy. Like, it's they're really thick. cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, moving on, some other side questions. Some people had sent me. Um, how about this one? Are red tails hardy fish? What's your personal opinion on that? Personal opinion, yeah, they're definitely hardy. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell when there's something wrong. Uh, it takes a lot. There was, mm -hmm. there was times I went on, you know, vacation or something or, you know, just was too busy with work or something and didn't couldn't change the water fast enough. And, you know, I test the water and check them and see how they're doing. And it was just mm -hmm. like, wow, man, they, these things are very, very hardy. So when I hear people, you know, can't keep them, it's like, how, like, I, I think I, I heard you say one time, I don't know if you're we hanging out or what, but I think you called, called them the, the sturdiest fish in the hobby or something. So, I, are those they, strong words? Did you maybe say that or no? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, but it, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously a lot, a lot of hardy fish out there that have survived for a long, look at sturgeon, for example. Yeah. Things have lived forever. They go through anything, you know what I mean? But. I think yeah. red tails, you know, I mean, they've, they've kind of started adapting to crazy situations. Like the Amazon, for example, is just a crazy situation. They're the gold mining and trash dumping in the water and all sorts of crap going on over there. And then mm -hmm. they're coming into Florida, into the canals, and the canals ain't clean either. You know, I mean, they try to keep them clean, but they ain't super clean, you know. And then you got other youtubers <laughs> that are releasing catfish into the dang canals <laughs> you know yeah. like whatever it's a closed environment i guess but yeah still, like i don't know they're they've they've become proven to be very very adaptable to a lot of situations and very various temperatures various parameters various alkalinities all sorts of crazy stuff okay how about this question in the chat, Dusty? Uh, what about keeping them with large species of bichers? I have actually, I actually kept mine with bichers for Did a you? while. I um, feel like it looks like a giant worm to me. You know, I I'm not a huge fan of them. My wife mm -hmm. really really loved them, so I bought one. I was like, whatever, mm -hmm. we'll you know we'll try and keep one or whatever. And do that thing held its own. That thing was a monster. Those right. red tails didn't want nothing to do with him. At first, he, he they were like, oh look at that, it's a slurpee, you know. No, they they straight up he put them in their place, and really? he, he ran that tank for a while. The bicer, the bicer. We're talking about a yeah. bicer. Yep, it was oh a bicer. Is a uh, uh, ornate, ornate. Uh, yeah, yeah, ornate. The yellow and um, gray or black one or whatever. I feel like um, a red tail would just murk that thing at night. You that's know what, what I, I mean? thought. Yeah, but he handled his own, and uh, somebody ended up coming to grab one of the other fish and seen it and was like, hey. Can I? Da, 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 da. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. you know, the red tails are gonna get bigger. He ain't gonna grow as fast as them. So yeah, you know, and I let him go. But yeah, uh, I've actually been keeping uh, fish. I have like some small blood parrots in my tank. Uh, just random cichlids that I thought might get murked by the red tail, and they're fine. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, they, they'll leave them alone for a while. I mean, honestly, like I said, like I said, they'll eat when they want. I've mm -hmm. got, I've thrown um, even like feeder minnows or guppies or whatever in there, sick comic cichlids even, and they've survived a week, two weeks sometimes, and then all of a sudden they're all gone, and I'm like, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought about where just, go? I thought about getting some convicts just to kind of like maybe they breed out and just some easy food. I don't know, but if I was you and you're keeping bigger fish like that. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best ways to go because they breed so quickly and they grow pretty quickly. So, you know, you don't have to worry about them not being enough food at the same time because they grow pretty large, pretty quick. So, yeah, I've tr I've tried it with Texas cichlids and those the damn fry are so so fast and agile. They couldn't even catch them. But right, I, right. I guess I guess what survives survives. So, yep. Yep. That's nature. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that's essentially it. Uh, I'm trying to think how uh, – one more question, Dusty. I'm just asking because uh, I have a red tail, so this is really close to me. Um, how often did – do you remember you fed your red tails? So under uh, – gosh, what was it? Under under like 14, 15 inches. I don't know. I, I say under 20 inches. 
Um, you want to feed, try daily. I mean, not like I'm not, I don't mean like a whole entire slab of tilapia. Mm-hmm. I mean, like throw a couple shrimp in there, you know, let them kind of snack, mm-hmm. you know, and then kind of, I, I don't know how long you've had yours for, but, you know, and then kind of push it out, you know, push it two days and see, you know, the, the more aggressive that they eat, the the more hungry they are, you know, so you, you I kind of built a read off that over keeping them for a year and a half, you know what I mean? I, I started learning like, okay, if they smack the water real hard when I'm feeding them, they're probably starving. I mean, you know, yeah, they kind of yeah. just, but they don't, they don't really care. They don't really want it. You yeah. know, so I kind of gauged it off that. There was times when I had, like I said, entire plates of food ready to feed them. And it was just like, great. I thought this out for nothing. They don't want a single piece of it. Really? Yep. Yeah. I would say I feed mine maybe like once every three days. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't like overfeeding my fish. Right, right. But um but yeah, he never turns down food and everything seems to be going good. So Yeah, and like I, I said too, I mean I kinda I kinda did that whole thing as like a experiment at the same time. Like I wanted to see what mm-hmm. would happen, how if they would grow faster if I fed them, you know, more like how they recommend it anyway, which is daily and then two days and then weekly and then you know, I tried to follow that to see if it made any difference. Versus ones that I got, you know, donated to me or whatever that were 14, 15, 16 inches. See if they were different uh, based on how somebody else raised them. And it, it totally was. I mean, like I said, there are some days that, you know, Thor, for example, would eat two slabs of tilapia. And then, you know, the other one would eat like a, a little bite sized piece and they were done. Hmm. And it was like, okay. And then the next day, the, the smaller one would eat like a whole piece. And it, it, it changed a lot on how how much than how often they wanted to eat truthfully. Yeah. I would, one thing that blows my mind too, is when I feed them, uh, a lot of times when I put that first little piece of food in the water, I'll kind of just like, uh, I'm not feeding the fish yet, but I'll just dip that shrimp in the water. And it's yeah. amazing how fast they get a hold of that smell, you know, like, Oh yeah. Red tail just is out and ready. You know, it's just Dude, it's, across the tank. You can put it in there and just watch them. Yeah, it's nuts. Up. The first it's thing, nuts. they're whiskers. These little, these little whiskers. Yeah. These little whiskers will go crazy. You'll see yeah. them all going nuts. They're just, they start doing this whole oh finger thing, God. you know. And it's next nuts. thing you know, they're flying across the tank trying to find it. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like even the other fish, I mean, once one fish gets a read on it, I feel like they tell the others or something. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. All the other ones notice, hey, something's moving in the water. We got to go get a piece of it. Yeah. Um, what does this say? Reconsider because there's only a handful of fish keepers that can correctly take care of these beasts. Seriously, a fraction of a fraction of a percentage, you're probably not one of them. Yeah, I mean, they're tough to keep. Uh, I don't really know what that means, but uh, <laughs> I'm doing my best, man. So, you know, and I feel like a lot of people uh, on the Internet uh, will talk the talk, you know, like they're giving advice right. all day long. And it's just like let's let's see your fish you know or i yep, don't know yep. oh you always get those especially in the monster fish thing man there's always people that are like you can't do that and it's like okay let's see your guppy tank, dude. <laughs> you know like i don't care I know. You know like i don't care yeah i'll do this for fun it doesn't matter what kind of fish you keep you yeah probably, you know you can keep goldfish and still do it wrong you can keep a freaking iguana and do it wrong you can keep a dog and do it wrong you can have kids and do it wrong exactly it's all yeah. about you and how much you want to put into it. Yeah. Not what other people say. Like that. <laughs> Dear Lord, I was in i I'm not putting any Facebook group on blast, but uh fish tank enablers. I was uh, I keep I just got um I was banned for the longest time, but I'm back now. So I'm trying to behave about it. And uh it's it's hard. It's just uh there's just such a so many beginners in there that are just spouting bad advice. It drives me bonkers. Right. But uh, yeah, that's why I try to I try to go on there for just that reason. I try to give people the right advice. So hopefully they read mine. But oh, it's kind of overwhelming it? when you look at all the other advice and you're like, all right. Like, yeah, you 200 comment comments. Yeah. Like, OK, gosh, like, no, <laughs> this is all backwards, dude. <laughs> yeah. You're like, <laughs> I need to go to sleep now. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, I guess. uh. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on tonight. Um, these are I'm trying to make these as fun as possible. So please let us know in the comments 
what you think of these live streams. We're kind of going to keep them topic based. Uh, make sure, guys, uh, I should have said this a couple uh, more, more. You need to go to YouTube and subscribe to Aquatic Guru. This is Dusty's channel. Check out his sweet That's shirt. Logo. Buy his merch for Pete's sake. Look at that shirt, man. He's got hoodies, everything. So I do. Uh, that I do. Uh, Don't buy the crew uh, socks, though, man. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to pull that off there. That's that was yeah. bad investment. <laughs> uh, you, oh, you bought them? They were terrible, I, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I got a sample. I got a sample of each product. Mm -hmm. Um, the socks just bleh. no good, huh? I thought they're all they're all hyped up down in their little description thingy, and those were not that great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, uh, without further ado, um, please, guys, hit up the comment section and tell us what you're thinking. Um, we really want to hear from you. Uh, me and Dusty will try our best to be in the comment section. Go to his channel as well. So all these cool videos are on his channel. Um, and I feel like uh, I've been push I've been pushing Dusty because uh, I want to see more videos from this guy because he's <laughs> he's a genius when it comes to fish keeping. And uh, go push him on his channel to do more videos. So. Go go to his channel and do that. So, um, thanks for thanks for coming in tonight, guys. Have yourself a great night and uh, head on over to Primetime Aquatics. His uh, live stream is next, so it's in uh, eleven minutes. So, all right, talk to you later, guys. All right, later, guys.